We've discovered thousands of planet-hosting stars so far, but the thing is the overwhelming majority of them have been completely unlike anything we see in the solar system. The first exoplanets ever found orbit a pulsar, a rare type of dead star, which we obviously don't have here. The second exoplanetary system hosts a gas giant eight times closer to its star than Mercury is from the Sun, again something that we don't have. Then, as more exoplanets were discovered, this trend only continued. Compact red dwarf systems with several planets huddled together closer than Mercury and the Sun. Many Neptunes, an entire class of planet that seems to be very common, which the solar system has no examples of. Something like one third of all stars are binaries, while the Sun is alone. Even systems with eight planets, like Kepler-90, have a strange mix of rocky planets and gas giants all mixed together, seemingly at random, which is in complete contrast to the solar system, where the rocky planets, gas giants, and ice giants are all separated. All in all, it's starting to seem like the solar system is very rare. We have found a few systems that come close, but there's still nothing exactly like ours. Look at, for example, Mu Ra, which does have an exoplanet named Sancho with a similar size in orbit to Jupiter, and some inner planets, but all those inner planets are gas giants. So what exactly is going on here? Why can't we find any solar system analogs? Is the solar system actually extremely rare, or is there something else going on? The first thing to know is that not only have we not found any solar system analogs, we haven't found many individual planets with a solar system analog. For example, let's look at Mercury. It's only about 5% the mass of Earth, but we found very few planets with a similar mass to that. Off the top of my head I can think of Draugr, Kepler-37b, and some Kepler-444 and Barnard star planets, though there are some I've probably missed as well. But this doesn't necessarily mean small rocky planets are rare, it just means that they're hard to see. All the methods we currently use for exoplanet detection, from transit to radio velocity to just taking a picture of the star and seeing if there's planets around it, are more effective at seeing large, hot planets, which are also known as hot Jupiters. Planets that are very small, very cold, have very long orbits, or a combination of all three, are difficult to see, and have a greater chance they'll be missed, especially around larger stars. Mercury satisfies the first criteria, which is why we haven't seen many Mercury analogs. And of the Mercury analogs we have seen, such as Kepler-37b, which has a very similar size and temperature, they're usually around smaller stars. Kepler-37b star is about 80% the mass of the Sun, and Kepler-444 and Barnard star are orange and red dwarfs respectively, and Draugr orbits a pulsar. This is because smaller stars are easier to see smaller planets around. For example, look at the transit method. Let's say, unrealistically, that a planet blocks 1% of a Sun-like star's brightness every time it transits. But around a smaller star, that planet will block a larger percentage of the star's total light, say 10%, making it easier to see. Which is why most of the exoplanets we've found have been around smaller stars. The point is, we have a more difficult time finding planets around sun-like stars in comparison to red dwarfs. Plus, sun-like stars only make up like 10% of all the stars in the universe, so they are decently rare. And that's why of the planets around sun-like stars, most are either gas giants, such as the hot Jupiter Dimidium, the first planet found around a sun-like star, or many Neptunes like Kepler-22b. Of course, we do know of rocky planets around sun-like stars, such as Kepler-452b, but for the most part they are difficult to see and easy to miss. Distance also matters. Closer stars are easier to see planets around. The closest sun-like star to us is Alpha Centauri A, which famously has two other stars orbiting around it, meaning it's definitely not a solar system analog. But even if those stars didn't exist, there's some evidence that it has a big gas giant at a similar distance Earth is from the Sun on an eccentric orbit, which is, again, not a solar system analog. So the further away a star is, the easier it is to miss planets around it, especially small ones. So if we were around another star looking at the Sun, there's a very good chance we'd miss Earth and Venus, and are basically guaranteed to miss Mercury and Mars, though that depends on the distance and angle we're looking at the system from. So that doesn't suggest small rocky planets around sun-like stars are rare, it suggests that we just don't have the capability of reliably detecting them yet, except for a few lucky examples. But what about the outer solar system? Well, for Jupiter at least, we have some pretty good analogs, like Aegir, which is almost exactly one Jupiter mass, orbiting 3.5 AU away from its star Ron, which is about 80% the mass of the Sun. For comparison, Jupiter's one Jupiter mass orbits 5 AU away from its star the Sun, which is 100% the mass of the Sun. So there are some differences, but for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty similar planet. And there are a bunch of planets with the right mass but wrong orbit, like Kepler-167e, or wrong mass but right orbit, like 51 Eridani b. So we know Jupiter analogs do exist. If we were looking at the solar system, depending again on the distance and angle, there's a good chance we'd be able to see Jupiter. Probably not Saturn though, as off the top of my head I don't know of any Saturn analogs that aren't either much bigger or much younger, though I may have missed some. 
We know of at least one planet similar to Neptune, Lalan 21185c, with a similar mass and temperature. However, it orbits a red dwarf and is only about 3 AU away from it. Neptune is 10 times further away from the Sun. Because it's closer to a smaller star, radial velocity was a viable method to detect it, which it would not be around the Sun. This is the same reason why we know of, for example, seven rocky planets around Trappist-1. Smaller stars make it easier to find close-in planets. So looking in on the solar system, Uranus and Neptune would almost certainly be undetectable. Adding it all together, depending on the distance and angle, a civilization with our technology would have a decent shot of seeing Jupiter, but have to get extremely lucky to see maybe Earth and Venus, or possibly Saturn, but basically has no hope of seeing Mercury, Mars, Uranus, or Neptune. So while we have seen planets with analogous environments, such as cold ice giants or small hot rocky planets, we haven't seen any true analogs of any solar system planet. As in, not just the same size and temperature, but a similar orbit around a similar star as well. Which seems like it makes the answer to the question in the title of this video, we don't know. It's hard to put rarities on something you're not capable of seeing. The solar system is just full of planets that are difficult to detect. For an opposite example, hot Jupiters are expected to be very rare, with only about 1% of sun-like stars having one. But we see so many because they're the easiest type of exoplanet to detect. Metallicity must also be taken into account. For a much more detailed explanation as to how this affects planet formation, check out my Planets of Vega video. But for a summary, the higher the metallicity of the star, the more often gas giants form around it. For stars with low metallicity, only small planets will form, or even no planets at all. But for high metallicity stars, even stars taller than the Sun can form several Jupiter-sized planets. However, there are ways to infer the rarity of solar system analogs without needing to check every single Sun-like star for planets. For example, younger systems have hotter planets, and hotter planets are easier to see by direct imaging. Look at TWA-7, a star with a candidate exoplanet, TWA-7b, which if confirmed would be about the mass of Saturn, 52 AU away from the star. The only reason this planet is visible is because it's only like 6 million years old. Give it a few billion years to cool down, and this thing would be basically undetectable to modern instruments. So, the best way to look for a solar system analog is to look for systems that will eventually become solar system analogs. And to make it better, you don't even have to find planets. Just look for protoplanetary disks the material planets eventually form out of. Based on all the stars that are still forming planets like this, it's possible to make models of what planets those disks will eventually produce, and then use that data to infer how often a planetary system of a specific type will form. And I found a paper that did just that. Though before I explain it, just be aware that it was published in 2017, 8 years ago. I tried to find any new work refuting it, but from my quick search I didn't find anything, so I'm decently confident that the information presented will be accurate, but do also be aware that it is an older paper and there may be new data I've missed that gives much different numbers. Anyways, the paper will be linked in the description, but essentially they created a planet formation model composed of a disk with gas and planetesimals, like what's seen in real protoplanetary disks. They also model planetary migration, how planets migrate to new orbits through the disk, as well as factors that can slow that down. They consider a solar system analog as any system with only rocky planets within 1.5 AU away from the star, and at least one gas giant beyond 1.5 AU. And they found something pretty interesting. They ran several thousand simulations of many different types of protoplanetary disks, and found 668 models where a solar system analog, consisting of 1 to 3 gas giants, 0 to 4 ice giants, and 100 to 200 rocky planetary embryos. That may sound like a lot, but in total, a solar system analog only formed 4.3% of the time. When it did form, the protoplanetary disks were on the more massive end of the spectrum, with low mass disks not forming them at all. Solar system analogs were much more common in disks with small planetesimals between 100 meters and 1 kilometer wide. In systems like that, solar system analogs were found 26% of the time. They also found that solar system analogs were much more common in systems with low type 1 migration of planetesimals. Type 1 migration occurs in planets that aren't massive enough to carve holes in the disk, and usually migrate inwards extremely quickly. This happens faster than the disk can dissipate, and faster than the time it takes for gas giant cores to form, so systems with high type 1 migration rate have a harder time forming large gas giants. For solar system analogs to form, the rate of type 1 migration had to be limited significantly. So, assuming this paper is correct, less than 5% of all star systems will be solar system analogs which definitely would make systems like the solar system rare. For comparison, the paper also gives the occurrence rates for other types of systems. Systems with only rocky planets, no gas giants, occurred 64.5% of the time. 
Icy Giant systems, or systems with rocky planets and at least one ice giant, happen 13.4% of the time, and Gas Giant systems, or systems with gas giants anywhere in the system but also rocky planets and ice giants, occurred the remaining 22.1% of the time. So while there is definitely a technological reason we haven't found any solar system analogs, it also does seem that, at least if this one paper is correct, that solar system analogs are actually just generally rare. What exactly the implications of that are is anyone's guess. Maybe a planet like Earth needs a Jupiter analog in its system to corral asteroids and remain habitable long term, or maybe the gas giants have to be far away to avoid the inner planets becoming starved of water or something. But that's just my speculation. For now, this is just one estimate of the rarity of solar system analogs, roughly 4.3% of all stars. There will almost certainly be others, but unfortunately I've been very busy recently and haven't been able to cross-check every claim with other papers, so I am just taking this one at face value. Maybe it's right, or maybe it's completely off and the true rarity is something much different. Either way, these will remain estimates until we can actually start observing true solar system analogs. Because right now, while there are some systems that get kinda close, we haven't found a single star with a system similar to our own. Whether that be because of detection bias, or because of the intrinsic rarity of solar system analogs, or a combination of both, it is pretty interesting nonetheless. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space exploration.